imagine this, a sustained war and a dictator, not the best way to boost your population. Let's talk about Russia. Russia's worst case scenario sees population drop by 15 million. Russia could face a decline of its population by more than 10% over the next two decades, according to figures released by its federal state statistics service. Rostat's prediction follows long-held concerns about a demographic crisis. Russia's whose population peaked in 1994 with 149 million people, but has since dipped to 146 million today. Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 may have racked up high Russian loss of life, which according to some estimates total 300,000. Up to 1 million people are estimated to have fled Russia to avoid fighting in the war. Even before the war, Russia recorded almost 1 million excess deaths between the start of COVID um, and the end of 2021, the sharpest annual fall in population post-Soviet times. Putin said in November that Russia faces difficult demographic challenges and lamented the demise of the tradition of large families, saying that having many children and a large family should become the norm. However, Putin may face an uphill battle, according to Rostat, which has delivered a sober assessment of Russia's demographic situation between now and 2046. Scientists predict seismic shifts in families by 2095. Its baseline forecast says that a natural decline in the population will average around a half a million people per year, with the total population decreasing by 7.6 million by 2046 to 138 million, which would be the lowest since 1981, business um, newspaper RBK and Russian outlets reported. The Moscow Times compared the figure with the population of the Russian Empire in 1897 two decades before the revolution ushered in communism. In the worst case scenario, Russia's population would decline by as many as 15 million to 130 million, equivalent to the population decline of 700,000 per year. Positive annual migration growth of 154,000 will not compensate for the natural decline. The death toll will rise over the next two decades, exceeding 2 million per year in 2032 and peaking um, at 2 million, I'm sorry, and peaking at 2 million in 2039 before declining again. Meanwhile, life expectancy will rise from 73 in 2024 to 77 years in 2045, and 81 and a half for women and 72.6 for men. This population, I mean, I'm sorry, this forecast of plummeting Russian population chimes with the United Nations prediction that it will fall from 146 million today to 133 million by 2050. Demographer Igor Efremov told RBK that the highest and lowest numbers Rostat gave were extreme scenarios, but for Russia to increase its birth rate will require citizens to earn more income and benefit from increased government spending and maybe stop being at war. I mean, stop running people away because what men are going to want to stay in this country? And why do women even want to procreate with these people? And it's a consistent war. So their kids are being birthed just to be war, um, you know, soldiers or whatever. Maybe he should chill on that. But yes, I spoke about this. I'm not going to do this article, but this was hilarious a month ago. Putin appeals to Russian women to give birth to eight or more children. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right, Putin. It's not happening. Sorry. The birth rate will continue to decline because your country is in flux and you are a dictator. Continuing this birth rate decline story, and we're headed into France. France was doing the best out of the EU as far as birth rate, but now its birth rate is tumbling as well. France to reform parental leave after births hit post war low. So what we're going to be seeing in this article, um, 2023 births the lowest since World War II. France typically has the highest birth rate and is supported by benefits. Economic, social concerns weigh on birth rate. So that are that is the talking point of this article. French President Emmanuel Macron promised on Tuesday to overhaul parental leave so it pays better after France saw the lowest number of births since World War II last year 
and a blow to its traditionally strong demogra um, demographic profile. France registered 678 births last year, representing a decrease up 7% from 2022 and down 20% since peaking in 2020. Um, that was um, from the annual census report. The country has for decades been an outlier compared to other European countries, avoiding a collapse in birth rates seen in Germany, Italy, and Spain. Demographers have traditionally put this down to France's generous health and childcare system, as well as tax breaks and other benefits for having children, especially three or more. That has helped soften the impact of an aging population while contributing to the country's long-term growth prospects, which economists say are generally determined by demographics, productivity gains, and labor force participation. France will only be stronger if it revives the birth rate, Macron said during a wide-ranging news conference. A new, better-paid parental leave will allow both parents to be with their children for six months if they want. In addition to basic maternity leave, French parents can currently take additional parental leave for one year with the possibility of renewing twice. However, it um, only pays slightly more than 400 euros or $435 per month, which Macron said was a source of anxiety for some parents. He said it also cuts mothers off from the labor market too long. So this graph represents the amount of French births in thousands. And you can just, you don't even have to really see the numbers to see that this is falling off a cliff. Boom! just like that. Um, so the numbers are very, very low, and obviously they want to get that up. NC said the average number of children per mother fell last year to a de three-decade low of 1.68 from 1.79 in 22. I'm sorry, 2022. In 2021, France had the highest birth rate in the EU, along with the Czech Republic at 1.83. The last year for the comparative figures are available. Not only is the 2023 figure below the 2.2 generally considered to be necessary to maintain the population levels in developed countries, it is also well below the 1.8 births um, estimate that underpinned a deeply contested 2023 retirement reform. So it's all about money and the economy and taking care of people. So they just keep on with this refrain, that women need to have these babies so they can take care of the elderly. That could mean that if the birth rate stays at 2023 levels, the reform will not reduce the pension deficit as planned. However, a recovery in the birth rate in the coming years is possible as people born in 2000 to 2010, a period of high births, themselves begin to have children. Research Researchers at the Institut National des Etudes Demographiques said in a note, and this is just, um, oh, this is births per female. And you, you can see that it is taking that exact same curve. And so this is how many um, births per woman is going on. And yes, it's just still going down. And it looks like there was a high note in 2010, and now it's just falling off that cliff. While people are having fewer children, pro-family Unis pour, pour les Familles Association says that the decline does not mean people want fewer children, but rather conditions are not necessarily good. In a, an opinion way poll of 11,000 people for the association, two thirds who did not have children said they wanted to, while one out of five parents say they would like to, to have more children. The most common reasons people gave for not having more children were concerns about um, the economic, social, and climactic outlook cited by 30% of those polled. Some 28% said raising children costs too much. It really does. The successive crises over the COVID-19 outbreak, surging energy prices, and record inflation have taken a heavy toll on household confidence, which has struggled to recover from record lows reached in mid-2022, according to the NC monthly survey. So it seems like most women globally, most parents globally are saying it's just too expensive. And so these governments need to really, really take heed of that because these numbers are telling the tale. And that's why I like graphs, I like numbers, because you can clearly see that women, women are opting out. Women are the linchpin. Until you can convince women to have more kids, 
these numbers will continue to look like this. All right, you guys go ahead, jump in the comments, let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.